Hi everyone, my name is Daniela de Mello Mora. I obtained a PhD in civil engineering from Purdue University in 2021. I have around 10 years of experience in civil engineering, which includes research, teaching, and industry experience. I have worked not only in Brazil, but also in the United States, where I currently live. I would like to thank Geotechnia Brazil channel for inviting me to present my research findings for you guys today. This research was awarded with the Bass Poster Award at the American Rock Mechanics Association Symposium in 2019 in New York City. So let's get started. The topic of my presentation is correct interaction with a frictional interface in a rock model material and experimental investigation. You can find the link to my paper in the description of this video. Let's start by discussing the motivation for this investigation. Structures in rocks such as tunnels, foundations, and excavations, they may fail due to the presence of pre-existing discontinuities or flaws created by the stress state imposed by these structures. These discontinuities may range from micro cracks to kilometer sized fractures, and they may appear in different types such as beddings, joints, or faults. Rock masses, they may present interfaces. An interface may be defined as a frictional contact that separates two similar or dissimilar materials. This images show uh, examples of sedimentary rocks containing interfaces. Uh, in this particular picture to the right, one can observe several bedding interfaces and also the presence of, of cracks or joints. Sedimentary rocks, especially clay shells, are known for having bedding planes, also known as interfaces, which may interact with natural or induced cracks. The mechanical behavior of clay shells is of great interest, including for underground excavations and deep well drilling, as well as for natural resources. Also, for rock slope stability, it is crucial to know if and how cracks connect with each other or with interfaces to create a continuous fracture surface. Most of the previous research has focused on crack behavior on pre-cracked homogeneous brittle materials. However, it is very likely that we will come across layers of rock in the field, and the presence of an interface between these layers may affect fracture behavior. This can be seen in the figure to the right in which the existence of an interface caused an approaching shear crack jump about 0.2 meters after crossing an interface. The objectives of this study is to understand how cracks interact with an interface in a rock-like material, as well as to investigate uh, crack initiation and coalescence in specimens separated by an interface, while we'll also looking to the influence of a few variables on crack behavior in layered materials such as interface angles, interface roughness, and flaw geometries. Two types of cracks are commonly observed in pre-cracked rock model specimens subjected to uniaxial compression, which are tensile and shear cracks. Tensile cracks usually propagate in a stable manner following a curvilinear path that aligns with the most compressive low direction and their surfaces are clean. Shear cracks, on the other hand, they are characterized by the presence of crushed material and powder on their surfaces. Shear cracks may be classified as coplanar or oblique. Coplanar cracks make an angle of 45 degrees or less with a flaw plane, while oblique shear cracks make an angle higher than 45 degrees. Cracking processes and coalescence patterns are closely related to the geometry of pre-existing discontinuities, which I'm going to be referring as flaws in this presentation. And the geometry of pre-existing flaws is defined by the inclination angle, beta, by continuity, C, and by the spacing, S, of these pre-existing flaws. Flaw geometries can be classified into left and right stepping, and overlapping and non-overlapping, as we can see in this image. A geometry is characterized as right stepping when one moves along the direction of the loading from the top to the bottom floor, stepping to the right. Likewise, left stepping geometry is when along the direction of the load, one moves from the top to the bottom floor, stepping to the left. 
coalescence patterns have been classified into different categories by different researchers. For example, the lab table shows seven coalescence patterns observed in gypsum by Purdue researchers, while the right table shows nine types of coalescence patterns identified in gypsum and marble by MIT researchers. Regarding materials containing an interface, a few researchers have focused on the flexion or penetration of a tensile crack approaching an interface. According to a research performed by Roy Shu in 2003, the angle between the incident crack plane and the interface affects whether an incident crack will penetrate an interface or be deflected. According to his research, Deflection takes place when incident angles range from 0 to 59 degrees, while penetration occurs for incident angles from 59 to 90 degrees. At present, there is no well-established experimental work that investigates the influence of frictional interfaces, interface angle, and flaw geometries on crack behavior in homogeneous specimens under compressive loading. I'm going to go ahead and show you the procedures that were taken to prepare the specimens for this investigation. The specimens were made of gypsum and their dimensions were 8 inches high by 4 inches wide by 1 inch thick. Two types of specimens were tested, a homogeneous which contained only pre-existing flaws which you can see in the image to the left and layered which contain an interface and two pre-existing flaws, as you can see in the image to the right. The homogeneous uh, specimens were used for comparison. Here are the types of geometries that were used in the investigation. A last step in geometry with spacing 0, continuity negative 2a, and beta equal to 30 degrees. A right step in geometry with spacing 3a, continuity 0, and beta equal to 30 degrees, and an overlapping geometry with spacing 2a, continuity a, and beta equal to 30 degrees. Three different uh, inclination angles of the interface were tested, 70, 80, and 90 degrees from the vertical, and two different interface roughnesses were also tested, a rough interface with friction angle of 50 degrees and a smooth interface with friction angle of 35 degrees. As for specimen preparation, a PVC block was placed inside a steel mold to serve as cast for the first half of the specimen, and the pre-existing flaws were created by using steel shims. To produce a rough interface, sandpaper was attached to the PVC block, and to produce a smooth interface, no sandpaper was attached. To prepare the gypsum mixture, I used diatom measures earth, water, and hydrocol V11, and then this mixture was poured into the steel mold and then vibrated for about four minutes. You have to let it um, sit for 24 hours before removing the block and removing the steel shim, and then you go ahead and prepare a new mixture of gypsum and pour against the first half, also using the steel shims to create the other pre-existing flaw. As for experimental setup, uniaxial compression tests were run uh, with a displacement control rate of 0.04 millimeters per second. Um, the load applied to the specimen was reported by using a data acquisition system. The surface displacements were monitored with digital image correlation um, system, and a crack on the surface was deemed present when the DIC displacement jump was at least 5 micrometers. This is how the experimental setup looks like. The region of interest around the floss had a random speckle pattern, as you can see um, in this dark area in the image so that the surface displacements could be monitored using digital image correlation system. After the surface displacements are extracted from the images taken during the experiments by using the software DAVIS, the data was then input in a MATLAB code which produced these plots. Here we have an example of crack path detected and interpreted from DIC data for a specimen without interface. The color bar corresponds to the crack aperture. 
The cracks were classified between tensile and shear cracks by doing a visual assessment of the cracks after the tests and also by checking the tangential and normal displacements of these cracks. In this case, uh, we can observe that tensile cracks originated at the flaw tips um, at around 14 MPa. And we can also observe that coalescence took place through the linkage of flaw tips by a shear crack um, at around 35 MPa. Here is an example of crack path for a case containing an interface. We can observe the crack initiation took place at around 11 MPa and crack coalescence took place through a shear crack that originated at the tip of the bottom floor uh, across the interface and reached the upper floor tip. This is a video of the crack behavior observed on the surface of a specimen with an overlapping geometry and a smooth interface um, in, that is inclined 90 degrees with a vertical. We can observe cracking, cracks initiated in the flaw tips as well as at the interface. Um, this crack right here at the inside tip of the bottom floor is a shear crack that just crossed the interface without any offset and reached upper flaw uh, producing coalescence. This plot shows crack initiation stresses from the 16 different types of specimens that were tested uh, that contain an interface, as well as specimens that did not contain interfaces. Um, one can observe that the increase of both roughness and inclination of the interface reduce crack initiation stress. Also, it's possible to observe that the presence of interface in the specimens reduce crack initiation stress when compared to specimens without interface. This next plot shows crack coalescence stresses in all specimens that were tested with and without an interface. Regarding crack coalescence stress, the results did not show any trend with the change in interface roughness or interface inclination. Also, the presence of an interface did not induce any trend in the coalescence stress when compared to specimens without an interface. These are a few observations made during this investigation regarding coalescence patterns, I was able to notice that an important difference in the crack behavior observed on specimens with and without interface is that the presence of an interface leads to different coalescence patterns. Um, another relevant observation is that the variation in interface inclination angle and interface roughness may change the location where the cracks that produce coalescence originate. We're going to be able to see that in the next slide. These images of coalescence patterns exemplify how the change in roughness and inclination of an interface impacts the location where cracks that produce coalescence originate. For example, a less inclined interface had a shear crack originating at the bottom floor tip, while a case with a more inclined interface had a tensile crack initiating at the interface instead. For the left step in geometry cases, we can observe that smooth interfaces led to indirect coalescence, as we can see on the left turn side. On the other hand, in the specimens with a rougher interface, coalescence did not take place, as you can observe on the right turn side. These are the coalescence patterns observed in the right step in geometry cases. They also indicate that changes in interface inclination and roughness impact coalescence patterns. Regarding the interaction between cracks and an interface, results show that an interface itself is an important contributor to new cracks. Also, for all types of specimen tested, changes in interface roughness or inclination angle do not seem to affect the angles at which cracks initiated at the interface. For the majority of tested specimens, such angles range from 70 to 90 degrees. Finally, both uh, rough and smooth interfaces produce no trend in the number of cracks initiating the interface, meaning that the interface roughness did not seem to affect the production of cracks. 
the angle at which tensile and shear cracks reach an interface and how those cracks interact with an interface, whether they arrest or cross an interface, were also investigated. The findings showed that both tensile and shear cracks that meet an interface at angles under 70 degrees, they get arrested, while those at or above 70 degrees cross an interface with a certain offset. We can conclude from this investigation that different interface characteristics may impact crack behavior through layer rock-like materials. Our intent with this investigation was to contribute to a better understanding of the fracture mechanisms in rock materials containing an interface. The findings from this research may lead to a better and more economical designs in layer rock masses. I would like to thank Geotechnia Brazil channel once again for the invite. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or to connect with me through LinkedIn. Thank you so much.